Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today it's an opportunity for me to answer your questions. The questions today are all about biblical foods to eat. Great questions. I can't wait to get started. But before we do, if you would like to have your question answered, please join us in our private Facebook group, Biblical Nutrition Academy. As you enter to join that group, we're gonna ask you, what's your question? Also in that group, we're gonna start some monthly live Q&A calls in the Facebook group, so you can join us there. Now, if you say, Annette, I don't do Facebook, I can respect that. Just email info at thebiblicalnutritionist.com and say, this is my question I want Annette to answer and we will try to get it posted here in these videos. We aren't keeping up with all of the questions, but we're working really hard to do that. So also, for those of you who have found my books on Amazon and some of the other retailers, if you have left a review, then your name gets entered into a drawing. And today, because the questions are all about food, then what we're giving away is the Amari Digest enzymes. Enzymes are just really important because many times our stomach lining, the, the leaky gut, the microbiome is just all out of whack. And we're unable to digest different types of foods like in dairy or beans or proteins. And when we have an enzyme tablet or an enzyme supplement, it actually help us metabolize that food, break it down, and then disperse it where it needs to go. And some people are amazed at how much their health changes by taking an enzyme with each food, with each meal. It just kind of changes life. And if you are a type of person, you're like, oh, I don't eat broccoli, that, that, that causes problems later on, or I don't eat beans, well, enzyme tablets would make the big difference. So that's our giveaway today. So if you've been out there and you have left reviews for my books, be sure and stay to the end to see if you're this week's winner. Now let's get started with today's questions. Question number one, what biblical foods can I grow myself and how do I get them unaltered? Submitted by Lisa. Well, Lisa, you're the reason I'm out here in the yard. I, you're asking about biblical foods. Well, any food that God called good is gonna be a biblical food. So let me share with you what I'm growing and what might work in your yard. Let me start with sharing, this is my olive tree. In the winter, I have to take it inside because it doesn't like the cold winters here in Virginia. And I don't know if we have, we had some blooms coming up, but the, the late freeze that we had this spring just took everything out of my yard and even the olive blooms. But this tree would typically give me about two quarts of olives. I'm not that big of a fan of olives, but I like doing it just for the fun of it and the conversation piece. This tree really is a little bit uh, lacking on leaves, but it'll fill out by the end of summer. It's just been a really hard spring for it. But olives is definitely something you could grow. I love having rosemary in my yard. I use it all year long. I don't even have to dehydrate it because it's always available in the garden, no matter what season I'm in. Rosemary is definitely a good food. Now, this is the sad story of my garden. This is my pomegranate bush. It, yeah, it just, it has not done well since I planted it. Last year I did have two flowers and then one came into a fruit, but it didn't, it didn't all the way mature, so I didn't get it. It's just struggled. I've done everything. I've sang to it. I've read scripture. <laughs> I've fertilized it every year. Just doesn't like it here. So I'm going to try it again with a new one, but that's a pomegranate tree. Now this is my kiwi vine and I can show you some kiwi right here. If you look right in there, you see those little tiny little little specks. Those are going to turn into flowers and they're going to grow into kiwi. This trellis, it grows on a trellis, so this vine should produce about 100 pounds of kiwi. It hasn't yet for me because we seem to keep running into a lot of different issues with the temperature and the early freezes in spring. But you can see we've got quite a few. Um, if you look really deep into this, you'll see we have quite a few kiwis starting on the vine. So. It looks like a good year for kiwi. Two pear trees, this pear tree here, it pretty much maybe has one pear left on it. They were full of blooms, but we had such a late frost, it took out most of them. But we do have a few pears on this tree. You can see I've got one there, and we've got a few more hidden up in there. So I'm looking forward to those. And then over here, right next door, we have the persimmon tree. So this little flower 
looking thing right here is going to turn into a bloom and then into a persimmon we've got quite a few on the on the tree so far and here we have the emerald apple tree you can see i've already got some issues with some bugs there but um, these are such delicious apples they're called emerald apples and they're kind of a a deep red green apple very uh, crisp and very super sweet so I love them they don't always make it all the way to the end because I have a um, still trying to figure out all of the pest but it's definitely a great tree well Lisa I wasn't sure if your question was referring to the seven foods of the promised land which is why I showed you the olives and what should be a pomegranate tree I didn't show you the fig tree uh, or if you just meant biblical foods in general biblical foods in general we're just looking for good heirloom quality seeds we're looking for to purchase from a store that has the same uh, same guidelines as what you're looking for so I'm looking for non GMO varieties I'm looking for just good healthy plants and plants that are from a good store source and a good stock so I hope that helps uh, when you have let me just give you another freebie here so when you buy organic potatoes like a Yukon or a red if you can get them to grow some eyes then you could plant that and grow some potatoes just from what you had bought just for your groceries I want to show you that real quick so these potato these are my potato barrels here they were all started with just starts off of the Yukon organic Yukon potatoes I got at the grocery store and so these barrels are going to fill with potatoes by the end of the season and to me I feel like it's free food so I bought the food to, to feed my family but yet some of the potatoes didn't get you know served and, and cooked in, in time so they created they started growing the eyes and so I just took the eyes and planted them and look I've got three barrels of potatoes and so I always like what I call free food all right question two how do you deal with food allergies and sensitivities in a biblical way food has become so frustrating to me submitted by diane food is frustrating <laughs> it was not supposed to be in fact god designed it for healing and nourishment and to be a reflection of his love for us so in most programs i encourage the daniel fast for eating or just to go without any animal products and sugar for at least three to six months this will bring to the surface any food sensitivities now you're saying you already have some well it might escalate it when we recognize them then we can eat a really clean natural based god food diet and then we actually at that point will have a higher chance for our gut to heal we need the healing of our gut to bring the balance back into our microbiome until the microbiome is populated with healthy good bacteria we're always going to have food sensitivities so when we reestablish the good bacteria, we're not going to be struggling as much. So start with eliminating all animal products, I don't care where they come from, all processed foods and all sugars. And if you're eating real food and you think, oh, I just can't handle real food, it makes me upset, you know, I have issues, then you need a digestive enzyme. So realize we need to clean out the bad we need to populate with the good and if you can't handle too much of the good then take a digestive enzyme so that you can then when you're ready to reintroduce some foods back in then you can do so you can do so by just adding in one food at a time now here's a challenge while you're doing this whole cleaning out and eating real foods i want you to do a challenge 30 foods in a week 30 God-given vegetables and fruits in one week 30 different totally different because the more diverse our microbiome is it's called biodiversity the stronger our immune system is we were not created to just eat a single food like a monocrop or anything like that and we were created to eat diverse plants and vegetables fruits vegetable herbs teas things like that so my goal for you is to eat 30 different foods in one week real food now you can include any tea like if you had a chamomile tea chamomile tea that would be one if you had a lavender you know in your food that would be another if you had real vanilla that would count and so you can count your herbs your spices and your fruits and your vegetables 30 in a week and your digestive system is going to say with well, this feels really good we can deal with this and if you can't handle it because of maybe some gas or bloating then we need to get some digestive enzymes and maybe even some pre and probiotics but we want to create in our microbiome an environment that feeds the good bacteria 
sometimes we have to use enzymes and pre and probiotics to make that happen. So then once we get a strong microbiome, you're not going to have the food sensitivities anymore. So we kind of have to work through it. It's stages and it works. So don't give up. Even if you're like, I tried that for a week and I felt sicker. You might, you might because your body's created to get rid of the bad. So you might, but stick with it. God's foods work. So thanks for asking that question. Question number three, where do you buy your grains? The hard wheat, the spelt, the whole barley. And when you mention lentils, does it matter what type, brown or red, all of the different colors? So submitted by Lise, Melissa. So for those of you on my email list, I sent this all out to you with all of the links. This answer depends on where you live. First, always go to localharvest.org to find farmers and orchards and farmers markets in your area. Second, if you are near Georgia, Southwest, south, Southwest, but Southeast area, then look up breadbeckers.com for their co-op. If you're in Virginia, we have East Coast Preppers. And then if you're on the Eastern shore, we have Quail Cove Farms. Now, Azure Standard delivers nationwide. If you're outside of the States, then I don't know. <laughs> if you're in the Midwest, there's Country Life that has a co-op. Lentils, they all cook differently. Some stay in their shape and they look so good in a salad and others such as the brown and the orange, they tend to become mush uh, very easily. So that's my choice on those. Question number four, please explain why flour is bad since it's made from wheat. Submitted by Christy, good question. Flour is not bad. When we mill a grain of wheat um, or mill it or barley, we get a long list of God nutrients added to the grain of wheat. And just remember, wheat is a generic term in scripture. Jesus compares himself to the daily bread because bread was created to satisfy. It has more zinc than most supplements and that actually works. And it has enough magnesium to calm your nerves. It has chromium to keep diabetes away. And I could just go on and on and on. And I usually do in the bread making classes. Yet when man separates the germ from the white starch and then sterilizes it, we lose the value that we need in our body. The heat and chemical processes to make the bread or even just the flour that you're talking about to make it sit on the shelf for weeks at a time and stay soft, that is when flour is bad. Flour was created to have vitamin E for your skin to be smooth and for your heart to be strong. Yet vitamin E is an oil that will make bread go rancid if it's left out. So they always strip it out. So the more they remove uh, from our food, the more we end up in the pharmacy and at the doctor's office. The more we go back to God's foods, the less we have to make plans to be at the doctor's office. So the more processed food you eat, the more you'll be in the disease process. That's the way I like to say it. The more you're into lab experiment foods, the more you'll be a lab experiment. So there's just a couple ways of looking at it. Eat the real food from a real God who loves you. So thanks for asking these questions. Well, today our winner is Leslie RM, and Leslie's gonna get a bottle of digestive enzymes sent to her. So Leslie, just please send an email to info at thebiblicalnutritionist.com and put in the subject line, winner QA84. That way we can recognize your email. So for the rest of you though, when sometimes just like that food just irritates me, then you need an enzyme. I just don't feel good after I eat that food, then you need to try an enzyme. Sometimes it's not always in food sensitivity as we discussed, sometimes it's just you don't have the enzymes to break it down. Well, if you take an enzyme supplement with your meal, then you can enjoy the meal and not have any back talk later or any digestive upset. It's amazing how simple this answer is. It's just because our foods are so processed and they've been so changed from God's design that our body doesn't always recognize it or it doesn't always like it. And so we can correct that by giving our body the enzymes that we need. You do take these at the beginning of each meal so that the enzymes are there and available to help uh, metabolize and break down that meal. It's, it's a really, it's just a, a blessing to know that enzymes that God gave us in food were designed to help us break it down. And also we can have even supplemental enzymes to do the same thing. So thanks for watching. I hope you leave a, a comment down below and hit like and subscribe and the bell so we can stay connected. And be sure and join our Facebook group, Biblical Nutrition Academy, so you can ask your question and be sure and leave some reviews for the different books on, on Amazon or our website. Thanks for watching and until next time, never, ever, ever, ever forget, God loves you. 
He loves you and he has a purpose for your life. He has loved you from the moment of conception and he has a purpose that is greater than you could ever imagine. And yes, some of us have done things in our life that we may have some consequences for. He doesn't erase all of that, but he loves us just the same. Always remember that. And until next time, remember that God loves you. Thanks for watching.